Welcome to the channel, friends. So today's video is going to be something a little different. I'm actually refinishing this uh, Ernie Ball Music Man Stingray uh, Maple Neck, Maple Fretboard. So I got this thing used, and uh, the neck was actually pretty dirty. Like, I've never seen a maple neck and fretboard so damn dirty. Um, and I still bought it anyways, and now I'm kind of regretting it because it is a whole bunch of work that I have to do to refinish this neck. So as you can see that in this condition right here, it looks like it's pretty damn good. But if you look around in and, and kind of like tilt it in the light, you can still see traces of all the dirt that's in the pores inside the tight grain of the wood. Now, I've been going at this. Uh, I tried solvents first, so I tried all your common um, remedies like lighter fluid, steel wool, uh, ballastol, um, all sorts of stuff, you know, lemon oil, uh, fretboard cleaner, all, all that normal stuff do, does not work. Um, this level of abuse on this neck was, it was crazy. It was completely gray. Like literally the backside of this, it looks much better now, but I've been sanding it and scraping it with the razor blade. And then I'm hitting it with a uh, 240 right now, but I plan on, on finishing it off with you know, 240, 400, 600, and possibly 800. Um, and then obviously give it a nice coat of tongue oil or linseed oil or whatever I figure out is gonna be the best bet for unfinished maple. So this is quite the project. I literally have been sitting here for hours doing this, scraping this back and forth from like fret to fret, and then resharpening this on the stone like this just to get it sharper again and then go back and like and and scrape it back and forth okay you just scrape back and forth edge you go fret to fret and actually this produces a very good finish believe it or not it produces a like a, a finish almost like close to like 800 grit just by using the razor blade that's brand new like very sharp and use it as a plane and you want to hold it perpendicular to the to the fretboard like that if you can see what I'm doing. And you just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It does not do any damage. And then when you build up some material on the edge here, some wood, all you do is come in and scrape it this way and then scrape it this way. So you basically clean up the, the fret edges. But you have to constantly do that. Like I've done that like at least two dozen times already. And as you can see here, it looks much better. But then as you get towards the middle of the neck, it's still pretty bad. It's like, there's those three marks right there that you can see. It, that's still dirt and sweat and grime that got stuck inside the pores and inside the grain of the wood. So the only way to get rid of that is to literally sand it away. And that's what I'm going to have to do. The back side of the neck was, was completely gray. And as you can see, it looks much better now. Much, much better. So... I have to figure out how to how to finish this. So once it's like in a state where I'm happy with it, I'm gonna have to obviously um, protect it somehow. And it's gonna be either tongue oil or a boiled linseed oil or whatever I figure out. But it has to be like a polymer coating um, that protects the wood. Uh, because I only wanna do this once. I don't wanna have to do this again. So I'm gonna show you guys a quick clip of like the different methods I use to get um, this completely removed um, I'm just gonna work through the basics some of you guys you know might need help with this this is like a severe level of abuse most people uh, won't need to go to this level but uh, most people will just take take steel wool and like rub it on on the fretboard and this will all disappear but um, that's not the case for this base this thing was like from day one probably was never cleaned uh, probably performed with you know a lot of sweat and dirt and grime involved and uh, it, it hopefully I can get it into a newer state. But as you can see, I taped off the, the headstock because the headstock actually has a clear satin uh, coating on it. So I don't want to lose that. But you get the idea of what I'm doing here. I'm just going to keep on sanding away and shaving away with the razor blade until I'm happy. And then I'm going to have to go ahead and polish the frets. Like tape this off. Each one of these, you know... Um, areas of the fretboard and then 
polish the fret back into place because I am like kind of like buck, you know scuffing up the fret a little bit. Not bad. It just has a dull finish. So I'll have to polish it back up. All right, let me uh I'll show you guys some clips of what this originally looked like uh, cuz I did take some pictures while I was in the process of shaving it down and, and sanding. So I'll put those those clips right here so you can get an idea of what we're looking at. But I'm going to continue on and I'll show you some clips of me in action. And then I'll give you an overall summary of what I think at the end.
All right, so as you can see, that sweeping motion goes from fret to fret, and you're basically just like scraping that nice and clean. And you're taking some wood off as you do it, so it's a really, really smooth finish. It's like, you pretty much could leave it like this if you wanted to. You don't even need to sand it. But, as you can see, I still have some work here to be done. These four frets right here, these are starting to diminish all those traces of gray. I can kind of see right there, and all throughout here, some gray traces. So I may have to go back over that. But you get the idea. You know, go back and forth and then come in and, and then clean up the edges. That way you're not building up like a, a mound towards the, the fret. You essentially want to keep the radius of the fretboard. So whatever it is, you want to you want to come in and, and do it evenly and sweep across evenly and not dwell in one area too much because then you're just going to flatten out the fretboard, which you don't want. You want to keep that natural radius that it has. So it's going to be crowned in the center. You're going to have a high spot in the center and it's going to be a radius. So you just got to do it evenly as you're sweeping back and forth. Just keep moving, never stay in one spot. And pretty much this is what it's going to take to get this thing absolutely brand new looking. Um, I've learned this technique from my uh, one of the, some YouTube video. I think it was Kiesel Guitars. Uh, professionals use this method to clean up fretboards, believe it or not. Uh, specifically, unfinished maple. You wouldn't want to do this with any other fretboard. Um, this is uh, a technique only used on uh, unfinished uh, fretboards. So keep that in mind. Don't do this to your lacquer finish, your gloss finish, neck, or fretboard. You're going to destroy it. So I'm going to keep on going and get this to the point where I'm happy with this tonight.
All right, guys, so after many hours of scraping and sanding and then uh, finishing off with uh, double lot steel wool, I uh, came up with this conclusion here that I think I'm done. Uh, I did go ahead and apply two coats of the boiled linseed oil uh, across the whole fretboard in the back of the neck, and it looks beautiful. So I want to start off with the boiled linseed oil, but I also wanted to try out this stuff here. It's called walrus oil, but it's tongue oil essentially. And then true oil, which is basically the same thing as this guy. Um, just slightly different, I guess. It's, you know, Birchwood Casey brand. And then when you apply the tongue oil and it dries, you apply some of this gunstock wax, which is part of the, the Birchwood Casey, um, you know, line. Uh, but I've seen people use this. I've seen people use this. This has a matte finish compared to any of the others. Uh, but the only, the way you remove the shine, if you don't want to shine on it, you just got to hit it with steel wool again. Your double lot steel wool but just going over the process again I scraped everything down that took a lot of lot of time um, you know I removed a lot of wood from the the fretboard area some of the the frets I try to keep them nice and radius and, and level and even um, but they're scalloped a little bit you know it's it's not really noticeable unless you put a straight edge up to it a notched straight edge but I'm very happy with the results considering how bad this neck was. I don't think I'm ever going to get it perfect. I had to remove a lot of material to get rid of those traces of dirt and grime and sweat over the years of, of this neck being played. So I'm very happy with the state of the, uh, of the neck right now. Like I said, I want to try out this stuff first and then work my way to these over some time. But it does take time for this to dry so i'm going to come back in a few hours and apply another coat i've already applied two coats um, but i don't think i'm going to need more than uh, three so i'm very happy with the the finish of it the color of the wood it took a lot of sanding man I, i'm telling you to get this this neck was so bad but i'm so happy now that it's finished I can go ahead now, once this thing dries, I'm going to go ahead and put and reassemble it on the base and um, see how she plays. But she's super smooth, like I said. I, I finished it with 600 grit and then went straight to uh, trip, uh, sorry, quadruple aught steel wool and sanded down the whole neck and fretboard to make, it, to make the whole thing super smooth. So, really happy. Uh, so... If you have any questions or comments, please place them right down below. But that's going to be it for today, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you on the next one.